and hello everyone. Good to see you all. Thank you for joining us. My name is Vanessa Lowe and welcome to Financing Philadelphia's Future with Council Member Derek Green. This is our monthly Q&A with the public all about our move toward having a public bank for the city of Philadelphia. This is a quick half hour. So we're gonna keep going through and uh, get into the meat of the substance today, which is about moving forward on the board of directors. All right, council member Green, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a brief introdu introduction and uh, level set where we are right now. Uh, level set, okay, I will try to do my very best uh, to level set. We've had a lot of uh, ups and and I won't say downs, ups and twists and turns and misdirections, but we are still making progress towards um, the creation of the Philadelphia Public Finance Authority. Uh, we're now go getting to the process of having people to apply for the authority board, uh, and we'll be receiving those applications uh, for individuals who are interested in serving on, uh, we have two boards. We have the corporate board, which is appointed by the mayor. And then that corporate board will then appoint the policy board and the policy board will also hire an executive director. Um, so we've had a long process, um, but we've gotten to this point and we're continuing to move forward as we go through the steps to create uh, the Philadelphia Public Finance Authority. And ultimately um, the goal is to create a public bank. Very exciting. And the, the biggest excitement most recently is that the application for the board of directors, people who are interested in being on the board of directors, which will appoint the later uh, policy board is now available. Um, Peter Winslow, thank you so much. I think as, or somebody is putting that link in the chat. All right, so that application is now available. And I believe we have a slide that council member is going to go through that talks about the requirements for who can serve on that board of directors. There we and go. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you for um, the technical staff helping put together this slide um, for the nine um, voting members board. Um, as you can see from the slide, um, we will have people with various backgrounds um, who can participate. And if we could bring the slide back up, I want to make sure that everyone can see that. Uh, so we're looking with five plus members with five or more years of experience in those areas. And these are the areas that are also part of the areas that we wanna have support from, from people with experience in those areas, um, especially as we deal with a lot of the challenges that we've seen that have come out of the pandemic, um, which the pandemic has really illuminated issues that have always been there, but has become even more important. So uh, people that have an understanding and background in environmental justice and racial justice and we know we have an affordable housing issue in our city, so low income housing. Public education has been a, a long issue in our city. Public health as well, cooperative development, uh, as well as neighborhood-based small business development, uh, gender justice, and public transportation, all are segments of our society that have really been impacted by the pandemic and also often historical underrepresentation as we try to provide resources to help address those issues. So those having um, five plus years of experience in those areas are type of people we're looking for as part of the nine member board, as well as people that have backgrounds in uh, managing or regulating credit unions, community banks, community development, financial institutions, um, and also in, in a community oriented financial institution are the type of people we're looking as well. Um, we're looking for three members at five or more years experience in that space. And then as we close for the nine members, um, at least one member from a minority owned board or officer of that minority owned institution or bank, as well as someone from the uh, CDFI officer. Uh, and we know we've got a robust community uh, community development financial institutions in the city of Philadelphia as well. Thank you. Now I know the application, mostly it's sort of like checking the areas that you fit in these required um, uh, sort of categories of expertise, but there's also a field where you're, the folks have to write uh, a little bit of an essay um, about their experience. 
Um, I understand that there's also a, a letter of support. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, and, and a letter of support from, especially from those groups that in that first category that I talked about, um, a letter of reference um, based on you know, the person's background and experience in working with those organizations is also is also part of this process. So we want to make sure um, that we are getting people who have been working in some of these different organizations to participate as part of this board that will have that understanding and background um, to address some of the issues and challenges that we're trying to uh, meet through this new entity. Yeah, and what's what I really like about that is that, it, and this is all in the legislation. So these these rules and what you're Correct. filling out, it came directly from the legislation. And I believe this um, this issue of having to have the nonprofit advocacy organization kind of vouch for you is really what centers this. You know, what will be the Philadelphia Public Bank? Um, in really, this is the Philadelphia Public Bank, right? We've got the advocates, we've got the nonprofit. Um, leaders of these various issues sort of saying, these are the people who I want to be in the decision-making seats um, and helping to think through how the public bank is going to serve the city of Philadelphia. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, as we were drafting legislation and as I stated a few moments ago, I think it was really important to make sure that we had groups that traditionally had been underrepresented, especially as it comes to economic development and finance um, in our city. So um, people coming from these different backgrounds and having letters of reference from those organizations, I think is, is helpful. And you may have some people that you know may have worked at a credit union or a community bank or community development financial institution in their nine to five, but in their 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., they may have been involved in some of the other areas as well. So I think it's important to have people that have this type of well-rounded perspective of some of the challenges and concerns we've had uh, in our city, especially as it pertains to um, the type of economic development we're trying to achieve through this new entity. Absolutely. Um, and it's interesting. So this, this term experience, um, I believe that includes, for example, Philadelphia um, is filled with a lot of small credit unions, many of mm -hmm. them that have been operating out of churches. Yep. So when we say experience, do we also mean people who maybe didn't work at the credit unions? Because very often those are run by volunteers, but they may have served on the board of those credit unions. Right. When you say managing or regulating, and that's the very thing you're talking about. When I think about um, my church that I grew up in, Canaan Baptist Church, uh, Germantown, uh, my dad was a very active member of the credit union. Also, he was a trustee for a number of years. And so um, that type of experience of, I mean, it's still lending. I mean, you, you may be a, you know, a officer or have someone who's helped to manage a credit union, and you may be doing loans to community members or church members for a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars. Um, but that experience, I think, is worthwhile. And to me, although it's not exactly the same as doing a much larger transaction, but the basic skills are still similar in reference to um, trying to provide credit to people um, that have a need. But I think if you have that type of community-based um, lending experience, it gives you a, a much more well-rounded perspective when it comes to helping to do what we're talking about today, which is finance filled out these future. Exactly, exactly. So we have 15 folks on this live uh, show today, but I want to acknowledge that this is being recorded and it's going to go up on the website. And because it's such a, a deep dive into um, the people who might be interested in being board members, um, I'm concerned that the, the chat posting, thank you for posting that, Peter, um, is not going to come across. So I believe that the Philadelphia Public, um, uh, I'm sorry, the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition site always has the most recent updates. So um, to go and see um, uh, you know, how you can get access to that application, go to the Philadelphia uh, Public Banking Coalition website and uh, you can access it there, um, but continue to um, watch this. Next big question, council member, what is the deadline or is there one? So you know, we've been working on getting both, you know, this process also getting the city's website up uh, as soon as possible, and that um, website also just became active. Uh, in reference to the deadline, considering that we would like to 
um, get this board up and running based on the legislation as soon as possible, um, which is July 1st, which is also the same time that uh, we start a new fiscal year. So um, after some brief conversation, um, looking at having people to submit um, their applications um, by close of business um, Tuesday, um, June 21st, uh, which will give people three weeks from today um, to get that in and also give us some time to review those applications, uh, make recommendations to the mayor so we can try to move forward as soon as possible with the um, timeline that's been established by the legislation. Um, right. July 1st, and one other quick thing, July 1st is also a time for the new fiscal year. So we are also through the, rent, the end of this month going through the budget process and we're looking uh, for the administration to allocate money for um, the initial operations of the Philadelphia Public Finance Authority of $3 million and also subsequently help with the capitalization uh, of this new entity um, to the amount of $75 million. Thank you for that transition into the discussion about the budget, uh, Councilman. Um, so right now in the draft budget, is there any amount listed or are we sort of fighting for going up from zero? Uh, we're going from zero. Um, unfortunately, this administration has, I'll be politically correct, has been made things challenging. Uh, when I think about certain organizations that have been um, long supported by members of council like New York Arts, um, or other groups, you know, the mural arts budget was cut um, last year and uh, we were able to restore it last year in the budget process back to what it was historically. This year's budget, um, mural arts had even less than what was proposed last year. So unfortunately we have to do this back and forth with the administration. Uh, that was part of the reason why I did my legislation regarding the housing trust fund. Uh, so we would not have this type of issue every year. Um, but we are going through that process. Um, we're also going through the process of addressing um, the proposed real estate tax increase in assessments that the administration also just um, very recently dropped in our laps and kind of shocked many people around the city of Philadelphia. So we're working on different measures to address that as well uh, and you know, try to help as many people as possible um, with those issues of real estate as we are trying to move forward uh, with this budget process. Yeah, that was a, that was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I live in a condo with uh, about 48 units. And so I, when I saw that notice about it going up, I sent everybody an email saying, here's where to click on the link and see what the new value is because it's up there. It's on the city website already. And yeah, we right. went up a little bit. Um, and, and it's always a double-edged sword, right? You, you want the value of your property to go up, but that means that your taxes go up. Well, um, it's got to be balanced, and that's yeah. part of you know, and part of this new entity that we're creating is trying to create balance in reference to the organizations and the type of individuals that get access to financing. And so, having to fill out a public financial authority that can help um, small businesses, nonprofit developers, um, cooperatives get access to credit to help them grow, that will put you know a growth in our city growth in a way that's going to be more um, uniform um, from people from around the city, especially those who traditionally have not been able to receive um, resources to have economic growth for their organizations or their households. Exactly. I'm seeing some things come through the chat. I'm going to turn it over to Peter. Peter, do you want to share any comments or questions from the chat? Uh, yes, Vanessa. Uh, Pamela Haynes uh, asked the questions, is there anything that we can do uh, to help get the startup money allocated in the budget. And just to expand on that, where do things stand now? What are the, what's the likelihood of success? And you know, just uh, when can we know that it's gonna have, uh, that the, the financial authority is gonna have adequate uh, financing? Well, we won't know until the budget gets passed and you know, the process for passing the budget is that um, the budget bills are in the committee of the whole. Those bills will have to be amended. Um, there's a possibility that the council session, the last council session is June 23rd, that may get extended because of all the things that we're dealing with. But you would have to have that committee of the whole bill amended to include um, the $3 million that we're requesting for the Philadelphia Public Financial Authority. 
And if you look in the chat feature, uh, Susan Wendell provided an excellent um, PPFA funding advocacy toolkit um, that gives you know, some directions on how to advocate uh, for this funding by you know, reaching out to uh, members of council. Uh, there's a summary of the bill uh, that gives you some directions on how to you know, call the mayor, how to contact your council members, both at large and district, uh, and making sure that you, you know, remind them this is important considering that this legislation was passed uh, almost unanimously. Um, so this is kind of information in um, toolkit is also a script as well. And I think it's important to use these tools and get the word out to other members of the coalition uh, how to uh, support uh, this work. And there's also various tools that you can use via social media, Instagram, and Twitter, and Facebook, and all the other um, types of technology to communicate among each other that we used quite a bit during the pandemic, but even more so as a way to get direct access to uh, elected officials, especially the ones that are in City Hall, which is the mayor and members of council. Thank you, Peter. I saw a great question come through. Tell us, what, give us that question. Uh, well, just a follow-up from Pamela is asking if there are key council members to focus on. Uh, definitely the council president is president one, Clark. I think. Um, once you get beyond the council president, because uh, it's important for him to hear that members of the public support this. Um, but then all of the other members of our council are important. Um, you have to have nine votes to pass any type of legislation. Um, this legislation in council passed, as I said earlier, uh, almost unanimously, there was only one person that was opposition. Um, so I would suggest that you reach out to all members of council, but to be more specific, definitely the council president, and I would say the members, the democratic members of council um, who support this legislation, because I think they need to know that their constituents uh, also support this initiative and how it's gonna be beneficial to uh, members of their communities and the city at large. And the mayor as well? Uh, the, I'm sorry, the mayor as well. Um, although it's in the council um, purview now because council has to uh, pass the budget and the mayor will have to sign it. But I still think keeping the mayor involved in that process by reaching out, I think, continues to keep us on um, the radar screen for the executive branch. And also the, another way of reminding um, the mayor that we need the appointments for this new authority. So to the extent people are reaching out regarding the budget, um, but at the same time, reaching out and saying the board appointments, um, as well as the future capitalization that's important. So we've still got a couple of minutes. Let's move into the capitalization. So. It sounds like the funding of what I think of it as a revolving loan fund, but correct me if I'm wrong, that's going to be separate from the budget process. You, you just muted. Sorry, I just muted myself because I did not want you to hear um, the phone ring because I am in my office and I've done a lot of these calls in our office. So constituents are reaching out to us. Um, yes, yeah, so that would be a separate process. Um, the budget process is the process that we are allocating you know, in reference to the money for the operating budget. Um, in reference to capitalization, you know, we're looking at other ways to um, fund that. Um, we're still looking at some other perspectives, but ultimately uh, we wanna have the administration help us in doing that um, to come up with the $75 million um, to actually help us to um, really run the, well, provide the resources to do the things we've talked about in this legislation on our many talks I uh, financing fill up the future. Uh, that's different than the startup dollars to actually get the organization up and running, provide um, operating dollars for the initial uh, phase of this new authority. Uh, and once again, to remind those on the call that we base that initial operating dollar budget based on the two new entities that are somewhat predate um, our authority, which is the Accelerator Fund and um, the Philip Green Capital Corporation, which we've had them on this call in the past, 
and they had similar initial operating dollars to start those two organizations. Peter, I wanna make space for you if I have a question, but I wanna go in a slightly different direction unless there's other questions. Uh, uh, Derek, is, uh, is the allocation for the operating budget uh, uh, for startup capital a separate line item or is it uh, bunched in with uh, another item? So that would be, hmm, it would it would not be, that's, that's, that's actually, so there's a couple of different ways it could be in the budget, um, but it could be in finance, it could be put in the commerce department, it could be put in the managing director's office, uh, or it could be part of another entity. But for the most part, it would be a um, provider contract, which is class 200, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but will be um, for what I would say some type of provider contract to uh, this new entity uh, as we've done with other new entities like when the Philadelphia Energy Authority first got started there was dollars allocated um, to that group so that's how I would see it but there's times we can be creative in reference to how we allocate dollars in the budget the main goal is making sure the dollars are there and the administration does what they are committed to. Because the only the other challenge challenge we do have is that we can put a dollars into the budget, um, but the administration can always decide not to spend it. Um, we hopefully won't have that situation, um, but that's one of the potential challenges that we have, but hopefully we won't have that perspective, especially considering how strongly this legislation was passed by members of city council. Uh, Stan is asking us a follow up to that, um, whether the allocation could be put into the city council budget uh, and uh, and how does that the council actually come to its decisions about, um, you know, where this would go and and, uh, and um, how be a, in the budget. Yeah, um, I'm not saying it could not that is possible and a possibility I would like to go back to um, some of my notes and also talk with Emily Shapiro from the Energy Authority for when that was initially started. Because I do think there may have been some seed money from council, but I need to check on that just to confirm. Um, but I'm open to multiple different types of perspectives. My goal is just making sure that the $3 million is in the budget and gets allocated to the fill of the Public Finance Authority. The means we get that done um, totally agnostic, um, but I think we need to be, if we need to be more creative than, than we initially anticipated, then uh, so be it, as long as we can get the dollars necessary to get this entity up and running to do the issues and address the issues that we've been talking about for a number of months. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here because I'm so excited about something that's really related to this. One of the reasons we need a Philadelphia Public Bank is because uh, access to capital is really limited, particularly for certain populations, particularly African-American entrepreneurs. Della Clark has been running the Enterprise Center for about 30 years now. Um, and she's one of these rare um, African-American females running a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. And they just recently announced the creation of an equity fund focused on Black entrepreneurs. And this is so um, wonderful and kind of groundbreaking because they actually used a, a unique and sort of um, different and rarely used piece of uh, sort of government legislation, I think called the SBIC. Have you been following that? Tell us a little bit about that and how that relates to our, our goals for the public bank. Well, I've, I've known Della for a long time and um, what she is doing with the, uh, the equity um, entity that she is creating is very similar to what we're trying to do with the Philip Public Finance Authority. Um, to, traditionally, there's been a lot of dollars that have been lent out to small businesses, but once those businesses get to a certain level, there have not been uh, the same amount of resources available for equity. And once a business gets to a certain size, in order for it to really grow, it needs to have investors and equity investors. And that's historically been lacking for businesses and in particular, um, black and brown businesses. So by her specifically creating the equity fund, just like you may hear of venture capital funds in Palo Alto or New York or maybe DC, 
that decide to invest in different types of businesses. This is something that she's been working using the SBIC, which is uh, um, the small business investment company um, type of vehicle as a way to create this equity fund for black and brown businesses so that they can grow. And, there, and in a parallel perspective, the Philadelphia Public Finance Authority is trying to focus in a niche that's also not being met where we're working on uh, providing access to um, letters of credit, credit enhancements, which is also not something that you traditionally see from lenders. So what Della is doing is something that many traditional financial institutions do not provide. And what the Philadelphia Public Financial Authority is also trying to do is provide a product that's also traditionally not been available, uh, especially for not only black and brown businesses, but other businesses that are doing um, different type of work like cooperatives or affordable housing are those doing um, new companies or businesses in the green collar um, industry. Great, thank you for that. And just so you know, for those who are on, I've put a link to a wonderful article by Oscar Abello, who's been doing a fantastic job covering our public bank journey, um, but he's written about that new equity fund um, created by the Enterprise Center and Della mm -hmm. Clark. So yeah. check that yeah. out. And one good thing, Oscar also provides some great information about how we can structure this entity going forward. Uh, he provided me information in our last interview regarding uh, Virginia um, Community Capital, which is actually a nonprofit bank holding company that was approved by the Federal Reserve. And I also provide some guidance for how this new entity could be a holding company for a public bank in parallel to what's happening in Virginia. All right, we've got one more minute. Peter, anything else from you? Oh, well. <laughs> All right, we're gonna say no. I, you know, I, I, within a minute, I don't think we can uh, open up a, a new can of worms, I think. All right, let's leave the last moment then for uh, Council Member Green, any closing words before well, we say this, goodbye? You know, it's always good to have this conversation. I noticed some of the um, questions in the chat feature are things that we can continue to raise and address um, in our next conversation or in between our next conversation. But at the bottom line, what's I think is most important at this stage is letting members of council know uh, about the importance for um, the operating dollars for the Philadelphia Public Financial Authority. Uh, now we have the websites up, um, but that's to me the, the number one issue, getting that information across because a number of different organizations uh, and issues are also advocating for resources in this budget. And we wanna make sure um, that we are successful um, going forward. Thank you so much. And remember we're here every month on the last Tuesday Good to see you all. Join us again next month and please spread the word. We're looking for board of director members and the applications available. Go to the Philadelphia uh, Public Banking Coalition website. Have a great day. Take care.